Hello and welcome to day five and the last day of Maths Week TV. Maths Week has been a huge success this year. Already we've had over 360,000 pupils being registered by their teachers as taking part in Maths Week. So well done to everybody. Teachers, if you haven't registered already, please register your school's involvement in Maths Week on www.mathsweek.ie. We've seen amazing creativity on Twitter and Facebook from schools all across the island. So keep posting on social media and let us know what you've been doing for Maths Week. Some of the highlights of the week so far have been we've had more than 120,000 valid answers have been submitted to target boards. Our friend Franz from Isaac 9 ran a quiz with 186 classes from all across the island taking part on Wednesday. So we think there's about 5,000 students took part in that. That was so good and so successful that he's running it again at 11 a.m. Um, today. We've lots of activities and games available for everyone to do over the weekend on mathsweek.ie. Our Maths Week TV this morning is from best-selling author and maths presenter Jarton Poskett. You probably know him from his murderous maths books. These books have sold over 5 million copies all across the world. Jarton is normally presenting his murderous maths shows all over Ireland for Maths Week. Sadly, with COVID restrictions, he can't be with us today, but it's actually even better because now schools all over Ireland can tune in to Jarton and his momentous maths. And you probably know what this is. It's a chessboard. In fact, this particular really nice one. This was my 18th birthday present from me mum and dad many years ago. It's a lovely, lovely thing. In fact, when I was a little lad, when I was at school, age 10, I was quite good at chess. I came second in the school chess competition. Woohoo! So this is one of my favourite things. I'll quickly show you another of my favourite things. Look at this one. <laughs> That's a different story. Let's get back to the chessboard. It's an amazing game. Look, nice little pieces and stuff like that. But the weird thing is, in my old age, I don't play the game much. What I really like is just the actual board itself. 64 black and white squares. And you can do so many weird things with it. What I've done, I've got this piece of paper here. Can you see? And there's all the black and white squares. And I've numbered them from 1 to 64. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it finishes at 64 at the bottom. I am going to use this little piece of paper to show you something which is going to make your head explode. Hey, <laughs> watch this. We start off in the top corner on the number one square and we just put one little penny, okay? But on the next square, the number two square, we put two little pennies like that, yeah? Now, we're not going to go three, four, five. In fact, we're going to double up as we go along. So on the next square, if we double two, we get to four. I'm actually going to run out of pennies here, so I've got to use these like that. There we are. That's four pennies. But then we get to the next square, we double four, and we get to... Where are we? <laughs> ah! We get to eight pennies. And so, as we keep going, the numbers keep doubling. As you can see, it gets really fiddly putting those little piles of pennies together. So what I've done, I've actually written out the numbers of pennies that go on each square along the top row. So let's look at this. So it starts off with one penny, then two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So there's 128 pennies just sitting in a pile on there on number eight. And if you add up all the pennies on the top row in total, we will need 255 pennies. So the big question is, how many pennies will there be when we get to square 64? Have a guess. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> but what we're going to do now, don't worry about the numbers of pennies. Let's just see how big the piles of pennies are going to be as we keep moving along the board. Remember, we had eight pennies sitting on our four square, and that's the height of those eight pennies. When we move to the fifth square, 
That number five shows the height of the pennies on the fifth square. When we get to the sixth square, the height doubles again, and that's the height of the pennies. When we get to the seventh square, that's the height of the pennies. And when we get to the eighth square, the height of the pennies on the eighth square is there. I'm now going to put the chessboard on the floor to show you how big these piles are getting. So, pile number nine is about the same height as this ukulele up to there, yeah? Pile number ten is about the same height as the top of the old banjo there. How lovely. Pile number eleven is about the same height to the top of the skull, yeah? In fact, if you want to do this yourself, Pound number 11 has got 1,024 pennies in it. So in the UK, that's just over £10 worth of pennies. In America, you can do this with cents, that's about $10 worth. In Europe, you can do it with little European cents, that's about €10 Euros worth. But that's just pile 11. Pile 12 goes through my ceiling. Pile 13 is about as high as my house. And pile 14, <laughs> come with me, I'll show you pile 14. The pennies on square 14 are about as high as that tree. Ah. <laughs> well, that's square 14. Let's move on a little bit now. The next square we're going to have a look at as they keep doubling up and doubling up and doubling up is square number 20. And for this, we're going to look at the tallest building in the world. It's the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, that great big tower in Dubai. It's 828 metres tall, not counting the aerial on the top. So it's about half a mile in the sky, yeah? The pile of pennies on square number 20 is about the same height as that tower, the tallest building in the world. And that's just square 20. When we get to square 21, the pile of pennies has doubled in height. And so all of a sudden, you're looking rather small. <laughs> By the way, when you get to square 21, that pile of pennies is about a mile high and there's about a million pennies in that pile. But we're gonna keep going on now. We're gonna whiz on until we get to square 39. This is where the fun really kicks off because the pile of pennies on square 39 is about as high as the moon. <laughs> I'm not making this up, it's true. And then once we get past 39, we keep doubling, 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 doubling. We get to square 48. The pile of pennies on square 48 has gone way past the moon. It's gone past the sun. That pile of pennies is one and a half times the height of the sun. But I know what you're thinking. Let's get to the end. How many pennies, how big is the pile on square 64? Oh, goodness. Well, I'll tell you what, how many pennies? Let's deal with that first of all. I'll tell you how many pennies there are, then you see if you can work out how high they might be. The number of pennies on square 64 is 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,808. Yes, I do know that number off by heart. <laughs> Don't know why, I just do. That is a massive, massive number. But here's the really freaky bit. The height of the pile of pennies on square 64 is one and a half light years. What's a light year? That's another video for another day, okay? All I can tell you is that pile of pennies started off with one, two, four, eight, sixteen. That pile of pennies goes way out, way out, way out beyond the edge of our solar system. That's how high it is, okay? That's why I love chessboards. That's why I love the pennies. Thanks for watching. Let's have a little happy noise to finish with. <laughs> Hello, my name's Charlton, and today I've got something wonderfully strange to show you. Have a little look. It's these three loops of paper. All three of them have got a black line going all the way down the middle. What I'm going to do is cut along these black lines and see what happens. Watch this. Here's the first one. And if you look, the black line goes all the way down the middle. And therefore, if you cut anything exactly down the middle, you should always get two bits because look there we go there's the scissors going around there 
And uh, by the way, if you're doing this yourself, do please be very, very careful with scissors, as I'm sure you know. Don't rush, don't rush. In fact, well, this should have to be exactly on the black line, as long as it's close enough. And sure enough, once you've chopped it down the middle, hey, there they go, we have the two separate bits, exactly what we might expect. So they can just go and sit there and behave themselves. Here's the next one. Once again, the black line goes all the way around the middle. You'll notice, of course, it's got a twist in it, but that's where the fun starts. So let's give it a little starter there. There he goes. And once again, we're going to chop this one all the way around the middle. No cheating. There we go. It's a bit tricky with it being twisted, but just concentrate and we should just nicely end up there it is bink and we get two bits <laughs> but look what's happened the two bits are linked together it's quite neat isn't it but there's still two bits because we chopped it down the middle so that makes sense and this one if you look very carefully there is a line going all the way around the middle okay so scissors out get it started just very carefully that first little cut there and then scissors in there and once again we chop all the way round the middle as I chop down the middle one piece of paper goes to one side and the other piece of paper goes to the other side and that's why we end up with two pieces of paper or do we <laughs> let's see what's been going on all those loops started off with just a strip of paper with a black line down the middle. Now for the first one, I just made a nice neat circle like that. It's like a bracelet, stuck it together. Then when you chop it down the middle, you get the two bits. That's nice and straightforward. For the second one, before I stuck it together, you have to put one, two twists in it like that. You put in two twists, then when you chop that one down the middle, you get the two rings, but they're linked. And this is really kind of fun. If you make one of these and ask somebody else to cut it, they're going to be really surprised. There's two links uh, all held together, like a little bit of a chain. It's a neat thing. But the really strange one is when you put the bit of paper together, but you just put one twist in it. That's what happened with the third one I cut. Whoops. You just put one twist in it. And what you've done is you've made a one-sided piece of paper. I know it sounds weird. If you don't believe me, you make one of these and try and draw a line or colour in just one side of the paper. But of course, the one side joins up with the other side. There's only one side to this piece of paper. In fact, if you trace your finger all the way around the edge, this piece of paper only has one edge as well. It's a very strange little thing. It's called a Mobius strip. A few people actually had been inventing them and talking about them, but it's a German bloke called Mr. Mobius. In fact, here he is. Hello, Mr. Mobius. <laughs> He's the guy whose name is put with these strips of paper. Now, what you've seen is some very simple versions. It's worth having a go at these, having a little play, but I'm going to show you one or two slightly stranger versions of the Mobius strip. Here we go. This Mobius strip has got a red section going all the way down the middle. And the red section keeps the two white sections apart, OK? Those two white sections don't seem to touch at any point. So I'm going to cut all the way along the black line. I need to go around it twice. When I've done that, can you guess what I'm going to get at the end? Are you ready? Here we go. Here comes the last cut. What's it going to be? Ta-da! <laughs> there we are. We've got the red bit. That's actually a complete little Mobius strip. And then we've got the long, long white bit there. So it's two links linked up like that. Did you guess that was going to happen? Really? Did you? <laughs> I've got another one for you now. This one's really weird. What we need is a paper cross. And there's a nice shortcut to cutting a paper cross, I'll show you. First of all, you get your piece of paper and you fold it exactly in half and do a really nice tight fold there. And you fold it in half again and you do a nice tight fold there. And there's a couple of extra little bits. Here we go. Find where the four corners of the paper are. 
on your folded piece and that's where the four corners are go to the opposite corner there and when you get to the opposite corner you fold the whole thing like that on a sort of diagonal oops make that just a little bit neater okay and then nice tight fold down there these tight folds are important you'll see why in a minute then once you've done that you get your scissors and we cut <laughs> along here like this when you've done that when you open out this bit this is good isn't this great look here he goes and that is <laughs> that is our paper cross and what's more what's nice about the paper cross is the folds give you a nice line down the middle of each arm of the cross what I've done now is I've actually put some black lines along the folds so you can see exactly where they are and I'm going to get a little bit of glue just plonk it on the end of that little short arm and curl that one round and I've made him into a little plain band like that then when I get this one I'll put a little bit of glue on the end there and curve him round and then make that one into a plain band and then I'm going to cut all the way around both of these black lines. <laughs> and the big question is, when I've cut all the way around, how many pieces of paper will I actually have? Will it be one bit, two bits, three bits, four bits? Do you know? Have a little think. Ready? I'm going to start cutting now. <laughs> Okay, here's the very last cut. What do you think? <laughs> there you go. There's just one piece. And look, it makes a rather nice little picture frame, a little rectangle. Hello. <laughs> right, that's that one. And if I put it here, you can see it's perfect and flat all the way round. But now we've got another of these paper crosses. So I'm going to do something almost, but not quite exactly the same. A little bit of glue there. He goes there like that. So that's the plain band. And then if we get this one here, <laughs> we're going to put way the frame's going away. Going to put a little bit of glue there, but this one, when I glue it up, I'm going to put one twist in it there. So in fact, that top piece is a Mobius strip. This thing sets up a load of questions. First of all. Is that a one-sided piece of paper? If you started colouring in there, would you be able to colour in the whole thing or just one side? How about that? And of course, the big question is, if I come chopping all the way round both of these black lines, how many bits am I going to have at the end? One, two, three, four, six hundred and twenty-five million four hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred and nine, possibly. <laughs> right, we're going to get cut. Oh. Is that the t oh, what a shame. I've run out of time. Now, that's a pity. I was so looking forward to this. In that case, I'll have to leave you to work it out for yourself. In fact, better still, why don't you have a little try? Make one of these, cut all the way around. Remember what happened with the last one? When you do this, you might well be surprised. <laughs> OK, have some fun. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Hello, my name's Jarton and I'm an author and there is a couple of the things that have come out recently that have got my name on the front. But what I want to show you is a trick from here, the magic of maths. I love maths because you can do games, you can do puzzles. And one of the best toys you can have to help you is this, a pack of cards. Oh, you've got a pack, if you've got a pack of cards, you can do so many good things. I'm going to show you a little sort of trick puzzle thing. One, two, three, four, five, six cards is all I need. Let's do it on the table here. Here, come on, have a look at this. It's just a little counting game and it works like this. I put one to the bottom and turn over the first card and that's the ace, we'll call that one, yeah? Then I put two to the bottom, one, two, and that's the two. One, two, three, and that's the three. One, two, three, four, and that's the four. One, two, three, four, five, that's the five. And guess what the last card is? It's the Joker. <laughs> By the way, you don't have to use real cards. If you haven't got a pack of cards, you can just use bits of paper with numbers on. 
So what's the secret? It all depends on having the six cards in the right order before you start. So you've just seen what I did. Here's the puzzle. Can you work out what order you should have those six cards in so you can do what I just did? Can you work it out? And if you can't work it out or you want a quick shortcut, I've been nice to you. Look what I've done here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, if you want to see what order the cards should go in, you will have to play this video again and pause it when I click my fingers, which is now. <laughs> All right, have you got that? Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Have fun. Bye.